opportunity to get to know the candidates wishing to represent them. The local level of representation is just as important as the national arena, many times even more so, since the decisions have a direct impact on our property values, children's education, town stability, and the quality of life. The North Reading RTC is simply a vehicle in which to connect the candidates to the voters of North Reading. We are very, we are very active, we are very active within the community. Just last week, we held our second annual food drive for the North Reading Food Pantry. And I understand it was a huge success. And so thank you goes out to everybody within the community. Can I just excuse myself for a second? Is this loud enough? That's yeah, loud enough. Right. Okay, I, it depends on where you're standing. As long as you're standing in one spot and you're not moving around, you should be all set. Yeah. I, I'm out to the other room. I don't know where you were. <laughs> So, as I mentioned, Sorry. the second annual um, uh, food pantry drive. Uh, tonight is candidate's night. Next is the awarding of the North Reading RTC's essay scholarship for graduating seniors who are going to college in the immediate fall. We have 14 applications, a $750 scholarship, and the essay is very basic, what the American flag means to me. And the purpose between having that is to get a feel from our youth that they realize that this American flag is not just something blowing in the wind. And we want to know what the youth thinks about it. And this is a great opportunity uh, for them. Uh, we do have a, a donation box in the right table over there to my right. If anybody wants to contribute to the scholarship, that's where everything goes, all right, that would be great. Uh, so thank you uh, for uh, any donation that you contribute. Um, a political action committee should be more than promoting political values. It's about contributing to the community as well. Now, we have nine candidates four incumbents, five new candidates, with one contested race. Having five new candidates must be some kind of a record. And I believe that that would be a positive uh, sign. Each candidate is allotted a specified number of minutes to speak. They may use those minutes as they choose. If they finish before their allotted time, Questions may be asked within the remaining time that they have. The first speaker will be uh, Housing Authority candidate Jim DeCola. He has five minutes, but Jim DeCola has a, a previous commitment, and so we have one of our members of the RTC, uh, Hugo Weiberg, to read his statement. it to the ground. I'm reading a note uh, given to me, uh, written by uh, James DeCola, so I will speak in the voice of Jim DeCola. <laughs> my name is Jim DeCola. Due to a previous commitment, I am unable to be with you tonight. I am running for re-election to the North Reading Housing Authority. The board consists of four elected officials and one state appointee. I am currently serving as chairman of the Housing Authority. The primary purpose of the Housing Authority is to provide decent, safe, and sanitary housing to families, elderly, and or disabled persons of low income at an affordable rent. The Housing Authority oversees 40 one-bedroom units and four family units. Please visit our website at northreadinghha.org for more information. In April 2018, I retired as building commissioner for the town of North Reading. I have enjoyed serving on the Housing Authority for the past five years 
and would be honored to serve another term. Please consider casting your vote for me. Thank you for your time and consideration. Sincerely, Jim DeCola, Six Roach Circle, North Reading, Mass. Thank you very much. The next candidate is town moderator John Murphy, who was also allotted the same uh, amount of time, five minutes. Uh, he did not submit a written statement at this time, so uh, there's nothing for me to add. Okay. Um, now, next is uh, Warren Pierce. I don't see him in the audience. Uh, I was, he did say he would be coming, but uh, he must have got pulled to the side or something like that. So Warren Pierce uh, is the candidate for, uh, he's an incumbent for the Community Planning Commission. Next is David Rudloff. Uh, he is a, uh, one of the new candidates. He is away on business, and I will read his statement. Greetings. I am sorry I cannot be at tonight's meeting. I want to thank Jeff for organizing this event and for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself, albeit through this brief letter. My name is David Rudolph. I am... <coughs> Excuse me. I am a first-time candidate running for a seat on the town's Community Planning Commission on May 7th. I am originally from Natick and I have lived in North Reading for 10 years. I am married and have two daughters, ages 6 and 8, who attend the Batch Elder School. My wife grew up in North Reading and her family has lived in town since the 1960s. They have been involved with the town in various ways over the years. My father-in-law actually served on the planning board in the 1970s. I believe this has given me a unique perspective both on the history of North Reading and the new and exciting directions that it can take. My background is in design and construction. I have a Bachelor of Science from Northeastern University and a Master of Architecture from Boston Architectural College. After working for some larger firms, I started my own design and construction consulting business in 2006. I am an owner, representative, and a project manager for the majority of my clients. In the past 13 years, I have managed over 300 million in design and construction projects, both commercial and residential, across the country and outside in Mexico and England. If elected, I first intend to listen and learn from fellow members of the commission, our planner, and the residents of North Reading. I plan to make decisions that adhere to the current zoning bylaw passed by the town residents. I promise to treat each applicant with respect. When appropriate, I will work along with the other members and the applicant to find solutions that are mutually beneficial. I will always come down on the side of what is best for the town. I look forward to helping North Reading continue to vibrantly grow in a direction that is supportive of both families with children and older residents in their retirement years. I thank you in advance and for your support regards. David Rudolph. Now on to the Port of Selectmen. Uh, first to speak for, I'm sorry, the Board of Selectmen, did I make a mistake here? Yeah. The Select Board. <laughs> I gotta get up with the times, don't I? Um, okay, so for the uh, Select Board, uh, we have Leanne Gonzalez, who will now speak. You will have 10 minutes to speak. Thank you all for coming out tonight. 
with a Bruins game, a Red Sox game, and a Celtics game going on. <laughs> we appreciate it. Um, like, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Leanne Gonzalez. I am running for the select board. It's not the first time I've run. I ran three years ago with Rich Walner for the same two seats. Um, and we worked really hard, but we lost to the incumbents, but now we get to walk right in. So. <laughs> um, my husband's a retired state trooper. Um, I have two children. My daughter is currently a trainee at the Mass State Police Academy. Um, she will be graduating in June. And I have a son who's a, mu a musician. He is a drummer in a rock band, living the dream, gigging around Boston. Um, and I have my in-laws who also live with us. My mother and father-in-law. So I get lots of Italian food on Sundays, which is always good. Um, I have been a business person pretty much my entire adult life. Um, by the age of 24, I owned my own hair salon in Hall, where I grew up. I had several employees. Um, I ran that business for several years. Uh, when I met my husband, I ended up moving up this way into the woods and <laughs> uh, gave up my business. Uh, I started working in a hair salon in town called The Cutting Room. I've been there for about 20 years. I also um, was an assistant manager at Berksby Village in Peabody. And I now am currently managing five salons at Newbridge on the Charles and Dedham. Um, so I lost my place. Um, oh, and I also run the salon at the Artist Senior Center in Reading. When we moved to North Reading, we lived on a quiet little dead end dirt road in a little ranch. And we had a well because there was no water pipes. And we loved it. We were surrounded by acres of woods. And then a developer came in, <coughs> bought up all the land and developed it around us. So while that process went on, we began going to many, many meetings. We went to CPC. We went to zoning. We were in conservation. Um, we lived it for a couple of years. So I felt like I got my feet wet. Um, sitting in on all of those meetings uh, with Maureen, <laughs> sitting beside me a lot of the time. <laughs> so I did get a little education there. I'm also no stranger to volunteering my time. I was a Girl Scout troop leader for eight years of an amazing group of girls, my daughter included. I taught CCD for both my children from first grade to confirmation. Um, I now sit as the vice chair on the Housing Authority Board, and I am a member of the North Reading Republican Town Committee. So when people hear that I'm running for a select board, the first thing I hear is, why would you want to do that? That's pretty much unanimously the, the question I get. I feel like it's time for me to give back to a town that's given a lot to me and my family. Um, I would really like to contribute my ideas and my business background and try to think outside the box and, you know, maybe find some ways to promote some tax revenue and try to keep those tax dollars down a little so we can all survive here <laughs> in this great town. Um, I'm definitely call myself fiscally conservative. Um, and I'm eager to get started. Um, I started a Facebook page, candidate for select board Leanne Gonzalez. I'd love anybody to like it and feel free to communicate with me, um, ask questions. I'm really here for you. Um, I want to be a voice for all of you and um, see what we can do going forward. Thank you. Yes. Do you want 
you have any ideas for um, this Main Street area? Well, um, I know that there are lots of plans going on for Main Street um, with SOAR, and I'm all on board for that. Um, it's important for us to promote some new business in town, and I think that's going to help a lot. Um, I do have a lot to learn, though. I've gone to the past few meetings. I've been in meetings before. I do, I do try to keep up. Um, but I know I have a lot to learn. But I definitely think that is a huge step forward for us. I am definitely on board for that. Anyone else? Well, thank you very much. Our next candidate for select board is uh, Richard Walner, who is very much involved in the community. Uh, for all the folks who are at home, I don't want to say anything, but the Patriots bus just pulled up and they're all having dinner out there, so uh, maybe you can rush down when you feel like it. <laughs> I'll just hold on to this. Thank you. Um, all right, my name is Rich Waller. Thanks a lot for coming out tonight. Um, appreciate the time uh, that you're giving me to be able to tell you a little bit about how I'm feeling about being on the select board. Uh, three primary objectives, but let me give you a little background first. I moved to North Reading in the Martins Pond neighborhood with my family in 1991. Since then, we've added a son who is now a freshman in college. We've had a great experience with our school system, our neighborhood, and the community that surrounds us. But like many empty nesters, we are now faced with a new challenge. Do we stay or do we go? Do we come to North Reading to just take advantage of the schools, or will we stay and improve our community? We decided years ago we are committed to staying, and I think you feel the same way, or else you wouldn't be here tonight. You'd be at home. Uh, through my volunteer efforts, I've come to realize we have challenges that need to be addressed if we want to improve the quality of life for our dedicated residents. I started 25 years ago by joining the Martins Pond Association. I have since served on the Council of Aging as Vice Chair since 2012, Chair of the CIT Social Services Action Team since 2013, Founder of ACT since 2015, Think NRU, NRUE, with a focus on adult enrichment in North Reading, and I've been the Chair and Board Member of the Economic Development Committee from 2015 to 2018. And uh, it was during my watch that we came up with a $30 million Pulte property sale. And I have attended and actively participated in every community plan commission that has been sponsored over the last five, six years. Um, uh, Warren and I have seen each other quite a bit, doing a lot of different studies, and Daniel McKnight as well. And some of the studies that um, we've done is Complete Streets, which has to do with Main Street, economic development on the Route 28 corridor, which is very big. The recent uh, studies on the housing production plan. Um, we've done mass downtown initiatives. And uh, the big one that I want to call your attention to, which is kind of the culmination of it all, is the uh, almost ready to be released 10-year strategic master plan for North Reading. And this brings together all the elements that are the most important that I think are to our town. And if you recall from the uh, summer, you were surveyed as well to give us an indication about what was important to you. And in fact, um, a lot of things I believe to be true, you reinforced as well. We had overwhelming support for some initiatives in town, which I can share with you. So I've been very um, uh, fortunate to work with some very talented and dedicated volunteers and employees who share the same love for this town that I do. All this work, uh, all this volunteer work has led me to the following three objectives as a select board member. First and foremost, I need to be a diligent steward and fiduciary for addressing important town issues. I will count on my acquired business acumen from 25 years in the corporate world and 10 years in small businesses, plus years of volunteer work to help me meet that goal. For example, I have come to realize we have many competing needs. Fortunately, our schools are in great shape, and the current board nailed it on, on securing our water resources. But we all need to pay attention to the condition of the fire station, town hall, senior center, and the perennial sewage needs on Main Street for economic development. These are not easy topics to resolve and will require cooperation from town departments and committees to act in the best interest of the town and its future. 
I don't have all the answers, but I know how to listen, ask questions, and take action when it makes sense to do so. Second, we have a major demographic change which has only recently been getting the attention it deserves. Currently, 25% of our residents are age 16 and older. In 10 years, that is projected to be 40%. We're one of the fastest growing communities in the senior population in all the state. Um, but as I, as I have learned from, uh, from my days at the COA, we are not a senior-friendly town. There are substantial economic reasons and community quality of life reasons why we should all want to keep our empty nesters and seniors in town. Fortunately, the SSAT that I have been working with for years has to find a path to address this change. But the more recent introduction of the AARP age-friendly initiative trumps us all. This five-year plan will let us um, uh, join the other 10% of the proactive towns in Massachusetts who are already age-friendly. The select board supports this plan, and the COA has stepped up to join the effort with SSAT. I fully embrace this initiative and will advocate for the, a new age-friendly director who can pull this all together. Think of it as a parallel position to the youth director. We need somebody to do that kind of work. And this document right here lays out the plan on how to do it. Everything we've tried to do over the last seven years, this does it right here. So the COA and the SSAT are on board in doing that. Third, why do we have so many of us run to other towns when it's time to shop and dine? Unlike our neighboring towns, we do not have a downtown where we can gather and play. Instead, we have a Route 1 highway and a dangerous one at that. But here's the good news. In 2015, the town administrator and I had a conversation about the possibility of changing Route 28. Surprisingly, he told me, yes, if we have a good plan, we can change the highway to make it more downtown friendly by instituting a concept called traffic calming. It simply means you slow down the traffic so people, nor threatening people, spend more time engaged with their community and less time driving fast out of town commuters who are only going through our town to avoid 93. So for me, that changed everything. Yes, we can change our highway. Yes, we can create a downtown. And yes, and most importantly, our most recent town-wide survey per the CPC shows that you support this too. So imagine if you can, right here at Ocean Lot, the old stop and shop, a mini Linfield Market Common at 62 and 28 with mixed use development. With affordable local preference, not 40B, but with local preference housing, for our older adults and our younger adults too who are prevented from living in the very town they grew up in. Imagine a community gathering spot that is pedestrian friendly with a civic gathering area surrounded by small shops, cafes, health clubs, ice cream shops, you name it. All of this is revealed in the CPC 10-year strategic plan, which I fully embrace. And unlike previous studies that sound great but collect dust, I will continue to work closely with the CPC as I have over the last several years to take action and implement the ideas that have been put forth. But what about sewage for this area? The solution is called localized package treatment plants, and they are already in use at Edgewood and Martin's Pond Landing. We don't necessarily have to wait for the next 10 to 20 years for a pipe to come down from Andover. I'd love it if it happened sooner than later, but it's big money and it's going to be hard to get done. We can get started now and join the pipe later. I would encourage you to learn more about these topics by doing a Google, Google search, um, especially on the downtown. I did a half an hour video with the Matt Ligor show. Phil was there when he recorded it. And if you just Google Matt Ligor show episode 17, Rich Walner, you, you'll get a 30 minute uh, deeper insight into how I feel about this. This was done like two years ago and frankly it hasn't changed very much. So while my seat is on, on the select board is uncontested, uncontested just like Leanne's, your vote will help to affirm to us your support of me and the many dedicated volunteers who have worked over the last several years to define the three objectives I just described. I look forward to working with the board and a town in making these ideas a reality for us all. Thank you. Does anybody have a question or two? Or three? Okay. Thank you very much, Mitch. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next group of people to speak are for the uh, school committee. 
Uh, it's the only contested race in town. Um, but before we do that, I would like everybody to be aware that Charlie Jones, the former middle school principal of North Reading, and very renowned for being a very sincere, understanding, pro-youth principal, had the opportunity to be the superintendent, and he said, I want to teach. He wanted to have an impact on the children that he was able to uh, teach in the classes. I would like everybody to rise for a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Our next speaker will have 12 minutes to speak. It will be Janine Imbriano, who is the incumbent uh, on the uh, school committee. Would you please welcome Janine?
teachers and our administration at North Reading do a very good job at what they do, and I'm glad to support them in their efforts that they um, continue to give to us as a community and to our children as um, they go through this school. Um, the economics have gone up and down on my tenure that I've been here. Um, I have gone to the Capitol and uh, fought for more monies for us and will continue to do so as needed and it's always needed. Um, but I would also like to say thank you to Brad Jones and um, Senator Tarr because they have done an incredible job with working with us um, in getting us grants or you know helping us to achieve grants, I should say. Um, um, I look forward to have the opportunity to continue to serve even though I'm kind of shy and socially awkward. Um, <laughs> That's just who I am. But I love volunteering and I do love what I do on the school committee. So I enjoy having the opportunity to serve a third term. Um, and something I should say, but kind of don't always advocate for myself, but I will at this point in time. Um, as you may know, Mr. Bernard has decided to retire. And um, Jerry Venezia and Mel Webster is decided to end their career on the school committee. That leaves pretty much me as the most senior person having six years under their belt. Mr. Buckley, Scott, is awesome. He's kind of taken up right where Mel left off because he likes to talk and he's very up on everything that happens in the community. Um, he has two years experience and then Ms. Boutwell and um, Mr. McMillan are newly onto the committee with one year under each belt. So the person who, or persons who um, are now newly elected would have either me and then one person with no experience or two new people. So it would be really great if we could keep someone with a little bit more experience than just two years. So yay vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody have a question? Yes. I lived in the town for a number of years and I don't have any children in the school. So I'm wondering if you could say what are some of the subjects that they teach in the class? If you name off the subjects that they teach, I'm just comparing it to when I went to school in Stone High. And did you know what the, some, of the, some of the subjects are that they teach? Oh, yeah. I mean, there, there are the still the course, the math, science. Um, social studies, history, whatever you want to call it, um, English, there's robotics, there's um, digital photography, there's um, chemistry, physics, uh, still the, the main sound, but they have brought in so much more and in, in they've advanced upon those as well. Like if you are really advanced in math, you can do AP math, you can do AP physics. So. It's, it's still what you and I did, but they've added so, so much more courses. Well, I, when I went to school, they had basic reading, writing, and arithmetic. They didn't yeah. have computers, of course, back then. But I'm wondering, like, in the history course, do they teach really American history? How much time do they spend on American history? They do do American history as well as world history, um, and it's separated. Um, in different grades. I am not, um, not a I am not a teacher <laughs> and, and I, I could not tell you at what level I mean my kids went through it but I didn't necessarily pay attention to it in first grade you learn this about you know American history versus world history. I do know in middle school that they learn a lot of like Roman and Greek history um, only because I had to help with uh, the um, boards to show their work. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you. I'm wondering, you know, when I went to school, they had the palm of that, and they had the alphabet up on the wall. Yeah. That's the bright wall came out. In third grade, yes. Oh, yeah. So that's still a, a fail. Oh, 
Um, it's just it, it, when you get like 25 people, and if we do an external search, you're talking about a lot of people you're trying to get together to do, you know, possibly up to however many candidates we, that we get in. So we're trying to keep it relatively small, but very focused on further search. Thank you, but, but since you made me excited that I might be the superintendent, <laughs> and I decided that I wasn't going to be a superintendent, <laughs> That was <laughs> but I, I guess I, I, what I didn't hear was uh, if, if uh, someone who's not connected to the school system, you know, a senior, I guess that's the best way to describe it, okay. would, would, would they be considered, you know, because the seniors do contribute a lot to the education of children, you know, financially. So um, would, would that be considered? Yes. Um. And, and another one that I did forget um, was um, possibly someone working in the town. So that could be a business owner, it could be a past parent, um, it could be, you know, anyone. So yes, we tried to like reach the gamut of, of a, a broad spectrum of people to, to research, um, you know, because we have our focus but I'm sure, you know, someone who is in, a parent of an elementary student um, would have a, a different focus on what they expect of a superintendent, and as would a business owner or someone who has, you know, three kids that have gone through the school and maybe says, oh, you know, hey, I remember when, you know, maybe this could have changed or that could have changed. So, yes, we are thinking of that as well. Thank you very much for all of your experience, your years, and your expertise. Okay. Next uh, uh, is Tracy D. Gregorio. Uh, she's away on business, and she asked that a statement be read on her behalf. She is in Amsterdam. So she's pretty far away. But uh, Tracy D. Gregorio, a candidate for the North Reading School Committee. My family moved to North Reading in 1976. I grew up on Parker Drive, attended the batch, and graduated North Reading High School in 1987. To this day, I am grateful for and owe a large part of my success to my teachers, principals, and guidance counselors of North Reading Public Schools. I was a handful. <laughs> After graduating North Reading High School, I left North Reading for a while, earned a BA and an MBA from U UMass Lowell, a MS in Neuroscience from Brandeis University, and started my family. In 2004, I returned to North Reading with my family, the school system being the primary driver of that decision and have raised my three children here. My oldest is a freshman at UMass, so, and I have children in grades seven and 10 in the North Reading schools. I wholeheartedly believe in the value of public education, and North Reading delivers on that value. My, experience, my professional background brings over 20 years experience in data science and analytics. I've worked in small teams, headed large global functions, held executive leadership positions, and understand the realities of working with the budget. Communication is the key to success. New to town government, I am approaching this opportunity ready to listen, learn, and contribute. My goal is to work together with the community, parents, administration, and teachers to ensure that our students continue to receive the best in-class education that North Reading offers. I'm most excited about the possibility of, to help shape the future of North Reading education. I have two issues near and dear to my heart. Exploring the opportunities of social media in productivity, connecting our community with the school committee and administration. And two, school start times. I started my campaign on social media in a discussion about a school-relevant issue. In this discussion, 
I was a bit discouraged by the response of some of some to dismiss the opinions of those on social media. I understand the irony here given that you have come in person to this event while I'm traveling for business and need to submit my statement electronically. But this is today's reality. We live in a rapidly changing digital world and with it comes unique opportunities and challenges for our school committee, for our administration, and for our students. Without an active strategy, we are passive spectators. Social media is the modern day agora, and while I did not live in ancient Greece, I'm a fairly certain those citizens didn't gather to agree on everything and sing praises of the economic and political structure of the time. Not much has changed. Social media is not designed to be a one-way broadcast channel, and it gives magnitude to folks the ability to have a voice where they may have been unable to have one before. Either due to lack of time, lack of understanding the process, or fear. There are valid messages and sent sentiments in those communications, whether it be parent that is unsure, afraid, frustrated, or confused. If the messaging is taken appropriately, it's valuable input, and, it's, and it represents the input of our community today, in 2019. We are soon coming to an age where parents will never know the pre-digital world. Think about that for a minute. While most parents now have the hindsight of pre- and post-digital revolution, the next generation don't have that perspective. Their realities and modes of communication are different. While I fully appreciate and understand the importance of face-to-face -face communication, to negate the rest, of the rest is missing an opportunity to connect with our community. For better or for worse, social media is here to stay and we will continue to innovate. I believe it is our responsibility to understand how we can harness these innovations and put them to good work better connecting our community to us. I'm, I'm also quite interested in understanding the studies amassing around school start times. Anecdotally, I believe this is an issue worthy of due diligence. Personally, I was a student that struggled to thrive in high school because I simply could not wake up or be engaged at 7 a.m. My son followed in the same path and struggled to the point of nearly not graduating. But fully to the credit of the teachers, and at the time, Assistant Principal Downs, we were able to course correct. In his first semester at UMass Lowell, with no early classes, he made the Dean's List. While I don't have answers or a fully formed opinion on this issue, I understand there are feasibility and budget considerations that comes with such massive change management. This is a worthy pursuit and one that I would like to take on. It's wonderful to live in the safety net of North Reading. I was raised here and still friends with the folks I went to school with here and chose to come back and raise my children here for that reason. But the world today is digital, global, and always on. I'd like to build on the tremendous successes to date of the school committee and administration and believe we can on the leading, be on the leading edge of preparing our students to navigate and succeed in these global and digital realities. And that was <coughs> Debbie D. Gregorio. Next is candidate Chris Papavasello. I thought the Italian version of I'm sorry. <laughs> Ready for school committee. Please welcome Chris. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Chris Papavasello. Thank you very much, Jeff, for the introduction and, uh, and for setting up this whole evening and giving us a chance to talk to everybody. 
Uh, I hope to give you a little sense of who I am today and why I'm interested in running for school committee and what that would look like if uh, chosen to represent the town. I grew up in North Reading uh, from when I was two up through when I graduated high school. Um, after that, I moved to California, studied uh, Latin, and became a teacher. Moved back to North Reading with my lovely wife, who's hiding back there. I'm hoping you won't look. Uh, we recently had a son, Teddy. Uh, he's nine months old. And we, we chose this town as the place where we wanted to raise our family. Um, it's kind of a theme that I'm, I'm hearing a lot of people grew up in this town, left this town, and then chose to came back. I think it's, it's a fantastic statement to the quality of a town. When people choose to come back as adults and raise their own family there, it speaks to the type of community. Uh, and based on the theme of, of, of the speech here, it speaks to the quality of education. When we were looking for towns, we looked for a number of factors, but right at the top of the list was what quality is the school system? And having gone through it myself, I could vouch for the quality and, and really reading up on how it had tracked since leaving the town, I think that we're headed in the right direction. We've got a fantastic school system that's still getting better, a beautiful new school, and, and those things are things that matter to people that are looking for, uh, for a place to call home. Every website now that, that features uh, different, uh, different houses that you're looking at, uh, different websites to show where you, can, uh, where you can live, they all track really clearly how good the school systems are, where you live, what school the kids would attend, how it rates, and these things are very important drivers for property prices, for, uh, for demographics, for what kind of uh, experience you can expect to live in a town. It's a great barometer for them. Uh, when I came back here, as I mentioned, I studied uh, Latin, and I'm now a high school teacher in Wakefield. Education's become my entire career. It's actually kind of an awkward day for me. I owe that career and the reason I'm standing here to Charlie Jones very personally. He was my teacher in eighth grade. He's been a really good friend to me for the last 15 years of my life. Um, and today was just kind of a rough day uh, hearing about that. But because of his example and the example that other teachers showed me, I chose to go into the classroom with my profession. And I hope to bring that expertise in what makes for a good school, what makes for good support for teachers, how, how a town can go from supporting a school to a school can go up to supporting students, and students can grow up to become people that support the town in turn, and how to complete that circle. It's something that I kind of steep my, uh, my daily life in. My wife, as well as a teacher, we met while teaching at, at Wakefield High School. <clears throat> Uh, there are a couple of, of things that I think uh, really stand out as issues that I'd like to look at if, if elected to school committee. Uh, specifically, John Bernard has made a kind of an interesting election after everybody signed up to run, he announced his retirement, and, and that's kind of become the, the, the go-to point of conversation. But I can't stress enough, the quality of the superintendent is incredibly important. And how to pick a superintendent is perhaps the most, well, I can't say the most stressful thing, because Janine would know she was there when schools were getting built. I'm sure that was pretty stressful. But uh, it's, it's got to be one of the most difficult, stressful, and high-impact singular decisions a school committee makes. It can change, make, or break the direction of a town for upwards of a decade or more. Uh, I think it's vital that, uh, that we pick the right choice. And being somebody that works regularly in a school system, as well as with the superintendent, I'm the treasurer for our school teachers union. I have monthly meetings with our superintendent and see how he communicates with us as a faculty, how he interacts with students, what makes for uh, a positive working experience. Uh, in addition to that, and I'll be brief, uh, one other issue that, that kind of stands out to me for our town is the price that parents pay for a full day kindergarten. It's a little strange for me to say that being a, a father of a young kid, but we are one of only 45 uh, communities in the entire state that charge anything for kindergarten whatsoever, whereas over uh, a rough, roughly 300 charge nothing. To put it in perspective, we are the fifth most expensive state uh, town in the state for what we charge for a year of kindergarten. To me, that seems uh, like a useful way to make money, but still a questionable spot for where we want to be. As a result, only 82 to 83 percent of our students at the kindergarten level take full day kindergarten, whereas the state average is around 97%. That's something that can set these kids up to have a harder time as they grow old and, uh, and go through the rest of school. 
that's it. I kind of wanted to spend as much of the time as possible with people asking me any questions if they have any, or wishing you all a good evening if it's time to get going. Hi. Uh, just a question. So you have a nine-month-old that's a little early for going even to kindergarten. A little bit, yeah. Why are you running now instead of three years from now? It's an excellent question. Um, I'm running now because now that we've chosen this town to live in, now that we've settled in and are putting our roots in, I think it's an important part of being a part of a town to interact with it. To not get lost in our own life, our own bubble of our friends and our neighborhood, but instead interact with that town. Um, I think that school committee is uh, an excellent avenue for me because it's something that I know and understand the school system. That's where my expertise lies. If I'd been a small business owner, I'd, I'd probably be looking at selection or something else. But being in education, that's where I feel like I can make uh, the most positive impact. Cool. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. If it's OK, Chris, I'm going to add to your answer. Okay, um, I learned and I tell people that are in his position that if they're going to move to a town and they're going to have children, it is better to get involved before you have the children or when you have the children because if you get involved when the children are already in school, it's too late. And it's too late simply because everything's been moving and you, it takes years I think Janine could attest to this. It takes years to get things going the way you want to get them to go or to move, all right? Because people have so many opinions and, and objections and additions and so on. So it takes an awful long time to get a school system to do or function the way that you want it to function. Okay, so you've got to get there way before the kids are in the school. And I tell that to anybody who says they want to move to North Reading, I've spoken to them. When you move here, get involved. Or if they move to any other town, get involved right away. Okay, because the decisions you choose to push now will take years to get to fruition. So, with that in mind, I want to thank everybody here for attending. I want to thank everybody who's watching on Facebook uh, and who's going to be able to see it on your cam uh, on Thursday. I want to thank you all for your participation. Uh, I'm a firm believer that local government is the, the root of, of, of democracy. And what we, we do here, as I mentioned earlier, affects our lives, sometimes more than on the national arena, I believe. Okay? So I thank all the candidates for stepping forward. Uh, it's not an easy task. Once you are elected, Things are going to get tough. <laughs> you have a lot of work to do. And it's uh, going to be rewarding for you. Um, and the important thing is when you go home at night, as long as you know that you're doing the best that you can, that's all you need to know. OK? So uh, in closing, I, you know, we, we spoke about the scholarship fund that we have. We do have a, a box there. If you wish to make a small donation, that would be great. Um, I hope that the. Uh, the election uh, is, is a day of celebration more than anything else. Election day is a day of celebration. We get to make an opinion and make it known. So thank you all for coming and have uh, uh, a great uh, rest of the evening. Thank you.